First of all, Sandy, I want to say how sorry I am for your loss. To lose a child, I think there's no grief quite like it. And while it's been eight years, almost eight years, I guess, I'm sure that, that not a day goes by when you don't think about Stephen. What, what do you miss most about him? Uh, just his personality, his smile with his little dimples. Yeah. I miss he sounds like he he sounds like he was quite a character. Tell us about he, him. He was. He he'd always make you laugh. If you were sad, you wouldn't be sad much around him. I mean, he was just so fun to be around. And you know, he loved to play jokes on you. I know that your daughter was Stephen's twin. How is yeah. Stephanie doing? She has her good days and bad days. Um, now that she has a child, it's kind of like taking some of that away from her. The the grief from her. Can you take us back, Sandy, to that day in July of 2015 when Stephen's body was found? I hate to make you relive this, but I want people to understand what you went through on that day. Stephanie had driven down that road. She knew something was up. When did right. you realize that, that it was Stephen? When I had called Stephanie and she said, uh, Mom, did Steven spend a night with you last night? And I said, no, because he had school. And then I knew it was, it was him. Because it had already been on the radio that they found a body in the roadway. So once I talked to her and she said Steven didn't come home, I knew it was him. That mother instinct. Authorities, it seems, Sandy, treated it like an open and shut case initially that it was a run. How frustrating was that for you? Oh, it was very frustrating because, I mean, it was like nobody would listen to me. I said, he, there's no way he would be in that road. No way he'd be walking. He had a cell phone in his pocket. His car key was in his pocket. And if he was going to get gas, why didn't he take his wallet? His wallet was still in the car. He was found about three miles away from where his car was found, correct? Correct. There were other suspicious things that seemed to be pointing against this notion of a hit and run. Can you tell us some of the things that later investigators concluded that went against this whole hypothesis? Well, the pathologist is the one that ruled it a hit and run. At first, it, I was told he was shot. Then I told I was told he was beaten to death, and then the pathologist said it was a hit and run. And then all the rumors started, and it kind of like threw the whole investigation off. There was other physical things that just didn't seem to to jive with this theory. For example, Stephen's shoes were still on. Yeah. There was no shattered glass in the street no. or on the road. His cell phone was completely intact. Yes. And the injuries his body sustained did not seem to be consistent with being right. hit by a car, right? Right, because the only damage was the right side of his head. And um, he had a little bit of road rash, not much, on his um, arms. And you could tell he had defense wounds on his little fingers, um, like his pinky finger. Whatever happened to that pathologist, Sandy? She doesn't sound very confident. No, no, because she said he was hit by a car because he was found in the road. That's why she ruled it. But just because he was found in the middle of the road, that makes it a vehicular versus pedestrian. And other investigators were completely confused by that ruling, weren't they? They were, and they've even you know, they went to her and tried to question it. And she got so angry with them and said, I'll change it to say whatever you want it to say. I was like, what? It's crazy. But she still has not changed her ruling that it was a hit and run. She has not. According to the HBO documentary that was done on this, Randy Murdoch, the brother of Alec Murdoch, got involved in the case almost immediately. When you yes. heard that, what did you think? 
Well, when Joel told me that he was um, offering his service to help with Stephen's case. And that's, and that's Stephen's dad. Stephen's dad, yes. But I didn't know what case, you know? And so anyway, that same day that Stephen was found, right after Stephen's body left the roadway, I seen them, him and Alex at the crime scene. And did that raise any suspicions for you? Well, we were just like wondering why, um, but then they wanted like um, Stephen's electronics. And then I knew something wasn't right. So the Murdoch never got Stephen's electronics? No, ma'am. They wasn't. just want, they just wanted them? Yes. They, I guess they wanted to go through them, but um, no, we did not let them have it. Did you know Buster Murdoch at all? Sandy, had you ever run into him? Had you ever met him in any way, shape, or form? I met him when he was younger, when our kids played ball together. Um, but I know he, he did go to school with Stephen and Stephanie. Did Stephen ever talk about Buster? No, not, not at all, not to us. I understand he said to a friend or to Stephanie or to someone that he was planning on taking a trip with yep. someone from a prominent family. Who did he tell that to, Sandy? And he what did you that. that? He told me that he was going deep sea fishing. And I said, well, who are you going with? And he said, it's a prominent person. And, and um, I said, well, where are you going? He said, Key West. And I said, well, enjoy yourself, you know, and that was supposed to be mid-July, but he passed away before that. He got to go. Did you push him at all, Sandy, on who this prominent person was or what his relationship was? No, because Stephen was a secretive person. Yeah, he was just quiet about everything. So much has happened since Stephen's death in 2015. Gloria Satterfield died under strange circumstances. Mallory yeah. Beach was killed in a boating accident on a boat that Paul Murdoch was driving. Paul and Maggie Murdoch were murdered and Alec Murdoch was convicted for those yeah. murders. This story seemed to fascinate and captivate the entire country. As people were watching this unfold, I'm curious what it was like for you, Sandy. It was shocking at first, um, especially about uh, Maggie and Paul, you know, because I thought that family was invincible. Because when I first heard it, and I said, no, you're joking, and but it was true. And then um, right after that is when Sled came to my house and reopened Stephen's case. What was your reaction, Sandy, when that happened, when the case was reopened? Oh, I was excited, and I was like, well, where are we starting at? You know, um, do you have all his evidence? You have the, his clothes, his phone and everything. And they said they had it all and they were going to send it to be retested. So I'm still waiting for results on that. In the meantime, I know at the end of March, Stephen's body was exhumed, yes. which must have been a strange and painful experience for you in many ways having it your son's was. body exhumed from, you know, his yeah. final resting place. What was that like? Well, it was sad, but it was, um, to me, it was a joyful day because I've been waiting so long to have that done. And then it finally happened. And it was just like more shocked than anything. You know, I'm happy something's finally being done. You're waiting for the results of the investigation, I know. Yeah. But I know you also hired a, a forensic specialist to examine Stephen's body. Correct. Can you tell us what the results of that have been and what you have learned from, from Stephen's body being exhumed? Um, they haven't released um, any of the information yet because SLED wanted to investigate it first um, before anything gets out. But I do know that he's 
re-interned and he still has on his blue scrubs it says dr stephen smith i know he wanted to go into nursing and ultimately become a doctor yes can you tell us anything that you've learned sandy about what was learned about his cause of death from the forensic specialist do his injuries seem consistent with the theory that he was hit by a baseball bat? I mean, what have you learned, if anything? What I was told was the damage was so severe, it could not have been a baseball bat. So something worse than that? Yes. Anything else that the forensic specialist that you're working with told you? No, she just told me the um, the body was in great condition, you know. Um, he was embalmed correctly, but as far as any results, I think they were coming in sometime this week. What other information do you think the investigation might surface now that it's been reopened? Are there other things that they're looking at in terms of evidence? And I know that the car was never fingerprinted or never dusted for fingerprints. Um, now it's just basically the electronics and um, since we have a new lab, all his stuff is being processed in the new lab because there's more technology now than there was in 2015. So hopefully that will give some indication of where he was and what might have happened to him that night. Yep, and that's what I want to know. Where was he at? <laughs> where was he coming from? So it, are his clothes being tested, for example, for DNA evidence? Yes. They're doing it how it should have been done at the beginning. So they're starting from the beginning and then they're going to work their way out. When do you think, Sandy, the investigation and more facts about the cause of death and what might have happened that night, when do you think uh, that will be completed? I think we should know something by mid-May, late May. We should have some. I know also in March, shortly before Stephen's body was exhumed, Buster Murdoch made his first public statement about yes. Stephen's death. Can you tell us what he said and what your reaction was to that, Sandy? Um, the only, somebody had told me about it because I don't read a lot of stuff on that. Um, but it was uh, that he had nothing to do with Stephen's death and his um, heart goes out to the Smith family. And what was your reaction to that statement? Well, first I was like, um, that was convenient. And why all of a sudden are you sending a letter? It's been almost eight years and people's been saying your name forever. I would have done something about it way before now. Buster Murdoch's name kept coming up, Sandy. Yes. In the aftermath of this, a lot of calls to the authorities, some anonymous, some right. sort of stopped talking after they initially alerted the authorities to this. Do right. you still believe, do you still believe Buster Murdoch was involved in this? Well, I'm not certain because when I heard the rumor the first time I told Stephanie, I was like, look, we live in a small town, Stephen's lifestyle, you're going to hear rumors. I said, but you can't believe everything you hear. But then the name just kept coming up and up and up. But then once you start a rumor, it just gets bigger and bigger and spreads and s'mores added to it. So I'm not certain. There were some suggestions, Sandy, as you well know, that Stephen and Buster had a relationship. I did hear How much, that. Tell me, tell me if, if that's something that you believe might have been a factor in Stephen's death. I do not think that him and Buster were having a relationship. Um, Buster really wasn't his type, and he liked um, older guys. Do you think it had something to do with the fact that he was gay? I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, I'm praying it was just some kids playing around and went too far, but no matter what, you know, murder still murder. For you as a mom, can you describe what these last 
eight years and particularly these last few months have been like for you? They've been hard, but, um, you know, the fight keeps me going. It keeps me strong. And um, I just keep on pushing on because this is, I want answers. And that's what a mother does is look for the answers. Do you think that justice will ever be served, Sandy? Are you optimistic at this point in time? Oh, yes. I know it's coming. Um, I've been waiting a long time for it. And I feel it's coming and it's coming soon.